October, six of our church family spent eight days serving in Peru. And today, they're going to talk about it. All right, so for all you guys who came in during the song service, I'm not going to be speaking today, yay. Uh, <laughs> we're going to have a report from our uh, crew that went to Peru, so y'all go ahead and come on up. Um, sit the same way place you did so I don't, I'll get confused. <laughs> so, <laughs> they got to remember where they were sitting. Exactly. So. Uh, anyway, so uh, about a dozen years ago, we started sending our uh, high school kids uh, High school kids in our youth group here, uh, they find a place of service. Um, they attend, and we send them, in return for that, we send them on an overseas mission trip. Uh, so we've been doing that for about 12 years now in 16 different countries, and uh, two brand new countries coming up this next year uh, we'll be talking about in January. Um, never been able to send our adults. Things have, We've had trips planned, and things happen, and COVID hit one time, and you know there were other things that... Uh, that happened. We had, uh, we started out with like 15 that were going on this, didn't we? And kind of, and uh, different reasons. But, um, but anyway, so we had a chance to, to go. It's just a seven, eight day trip, um, and um, I'm, I, I'm going to let them tell you about it. Okay. So here's how we're going to do this. Um, I'm going to let Shane talk first. Shane was kind of our go-to in the in the trip. I said, would you kind of babysit everybody? And uh, so he said yes. And so. Uh, uh, so I'm going to have him kind of give a day in the life of, of what one of the trips look like. Um, and then we're just going to go down the line. I, I know that each of these people could probably talk for several hours and tell you so many stories and so many things they learn. Uh, I've told them to limit it to one. <laughs> and so, um, if it's the same ones they did in the first service, this is awesome. Okay. Just some really neat stuff. And then I want to challenge you a little bit. Uh, at the end. So Shane, you'll start, and then I think we hand it down to... Let me, oh, let me introduce everybody real quick. Most of you know these people. This is Salem. Uh, this is his wife, Denise. This is Peggy. This is Shane, his wife, Jess, and Bonnie. Okay? So, um, yeah. Good morning, church. How's everybody doing? Good. Hey, uh, yeah, we stayed in a town called Cusco in Peru, and it was extremely populated. I'm not a city person, and this is definitely a populated city um so but uh jerry wanted me to tell kind of what a day looked like for us as we were there so usually in the morning we woke up gasping for air because we we're our hotel was at fourteen thousand four hundred feet so uh yeah walking to the lobby was a chore every morning but um it took a lot to adapt to that but uh, we would we'd get up We'd usually meet in the lobby area, and they'd have, like, cocoa tea, which is, like, what they use to help with altitude sickness for Americans. So we go, and we have our tea, and then we'd have our coffee and our breakfast and get ready for the day, usually a word of prayer. And um, Janet, would, the leader, uh, David O'Rear and Janet O'Rear, were the who headed up the whole trip. They kind of set off two or three groups and we would get our mission for the day whether it was uh going to an area and handing out bibles or there was a local school that um we would it was a it was a christian based school but not announced as christian because as i'm sure salem will tell you christianity was not uh, a very favored religion in the area so uh we would go to that school and we would work uh helping with English, teaching the kids, helping with painting. Um, know, what else did we do? Built some tables, served a served dinner, just all kinds of stuff. But anyway, in the morning, we'd, get, we'd meet. We'd, we'd figure out who's going with who. And uh, we partnered with another church called Global out of Miami. There was 14 of them and six of us. Um, none of us spoke Spanish. Out of their 14... Out of their 14, only two did not speak English. The rest were all bilingual, which was pretty impressive. Um, so we really got to uh, partner up with them, really became, met some really good friends out of it, and 
got to do a lot of God's work, and it was uh, pretty amazing. So um, I'll let you kick off the first story. Good morning, everybody. Hope you had a good Thanksgiving. Um, so you're going to hear about the amazing people we met and the amazing children. The children were awesome. Um, so what I'm going to talk about is uh, I love history. And uh, if you know anything about South America, Spaniards um, pretty much dominated the whole continent. And all the temples that the Incas worshipped in were basically destroyed and had Catholic churches built on top of them. So anybody that's from Peru, Bolivia, all these countries down there, they're not real keen on Christianity because of their history. And so that's what I thought was going to be a big barrier. And after meeting these people, um, God works through us, works through people that are already there, the missionaries. It's just amazing how receptive the people were to Christianity. And um, handing out the Bibles was a big thing for me. I just, I thought that was amazing. Large print, <laughs> that was a big deal in, in their language. Um, but, uh, you know, it's just an amazing trip. And uh, if you guys get a chance, you need to do the same. I'm going to hand it over to my wife. I think one of my um, favorite things that stuck with me were the children at the school. And um, we since we didn't speak Spanish, they asked us um, to help the kids who are learning English, and they interviewed us, and it was really cute. And the first question, how old are you? Uh, 71 minutes. <laughs> but we walked out in the courtyard, go into the classroom, and the elementary school kids were at recess, and they came and swarmed me and about knocked me over, and they were so sweet, hugging on me and saying, Good morning, and some, even the little ones were saying it in English, and it was just so touching, and um, being the, in the classroom with them, and they had worship, too, after their class, and they were just very friendly and accepting of us. It, it was very awesome, and to have um, Janet and David there with us, where Janet's parents had been missionaries in Peru, in Lima, and that to have that personal connection, and her younger brother did the Bible ministry that was along with us, and um, it just felt very special to have that uh, along with it, and the people were just so loving, even though we had a language barrier, we kind of learned to, to how to say, um, God bless you, um, but it didn't matter, it didn't matter the language, they um, just were... It was very awesome. Thanks. <laughs> but like I said this morning, I, I want to thank Jerry for setting this up with us because it was just an amazing trip. The one thing that really, and to be honest, when I thought about this, I thought, well, we're going to go to the church I mean, in the school, fix some things, and we'll just hand some Bibles out. And that's in my mentality. But I'm telling you, I'm thinking I'm changing their lives, and they changed mine. We went... Uh, three hours to this mountainous area, and their church was probably the size of a, my garage, maybe. There were five ministers there, and people from five different regions that walked from we don't even know where to from to get there to get a Bible. And um, the one thing they told me is when you give the Bible out, just don't hand them a Bible. Actually look in their eyes and tell them, God bless you. And forgive me if I don't pronounce this right. But they would say, Dios Lo bindaga, bindaga, and it didn't matter. Just looking in their eyes, the, the joy that they receive from getting the Bible, because they can't afford it. Number one, and this get God's word, be able to teach these people. It was just amazing, and um, I, I know I'm gonna start crying again. That's all I do. <laughs> but if this anything like this ever happens again and you have the opportunity to go, I'm telling you, it will change your life. We are so blessed in this country and the people, like you said, they were so acceptable to us. And like I said, I've known everybody here at church and I'm, you know, hi, how you doing? You know, a good week, whatever. But when we went there, it's like now we're family. I mean, we get that closeness and even the church in Miami, we are like the family. And it was just so amazing to be able to go through this. And like I said, it changed me completely. And thank you so much. 
All right, since everybody's kind of cutting their story short, I'm going to give you a little. I'm going to give you a little backstory on the Bible. So, uh, Kevin Johnson, who was is um, Janet's brother, he lives in L.A. And him and his best friend, they have a ministry where they go to different countries and they hand out Bibles. And it's it's kind of prearranged. They they kind of scout the area for safety. They have a contact there, and what they do is they they have the Bibles there and ready for us to pick up. And the cool thing is they have them in the print size they need. Some don't read well in certain places, and they ha also have it in the language that, you know, it, it doesn't do any good for me to take my Bible and hand it to somebody there. You know, they're not going to read it. And there was two languages there, uh, Spanish and Kech Kechnik. Is that how you say it? Ketchu. Ketchu were the two, that was the Inca, the old Inca language that some of the villages we went to, they still spoke that. So we had Bibles in both languages ready for them. Um, so that, that was pretty cool. But um, my story was probably going to a town called Pisac, and this is where Janet's, um, holding a mic, um, where Janet's father started his ministry it's the town it's in PSAC and it's was the sacred valley they called it so it's a very like green lush area compared to everywhere else we were everywhere else was kind of like desert and the mountains are brown and everything's brown so this area like we went and the, everything's nice and there's a river that runs through it the, the grass is green uh, the mountains are green going up around it it's just a beautiful town and um we were going there that day to stop and hand out Bibles at a certain church. So on the way, um, a friend of Janet's from that town, Marco, owns a jewelry store and a coffee shop. So he invited the 20 Americans on the bus. Why don't you stop by first and get some free coffee? Well, being the great businessman that he was, set his business up so you have to walk through this beautiful jewelry store to get to the coffee shop. So for his $20 of free coffee, I'm sure these lovely ladies dumped over $1,000 getting to that coffee shop. So great move on his part. Um, but anyway, um, what Janet's father did, he was the original missionary in that area. And when he got to that area, what he did that I thought was so cool was he didn't go and build a church. He went and built something for the community. So he brought basically like a rec center and uh, there's like little bungalows that you could stay but his idea was bring the community to get together first before we get into you know trying to spread the gospel and all making the relationships so he built a community center had like soccer fields and playgrounds and all kinds of stuff and they would just bring the community there and it was you know they could it was a safe place where kids could go they could play they would have you know whatever sporting things and after school activities and as that grew he started the church there and um, Marco the guy that owned the jewelry store uh, as we were getting coffee I'm gonna break down again he uh, you know he just broke down in tears and said how much you know, what Janet's dad did changed his life and spreading the gospel through that town. And you could see, like, this was this was a business. There was no businesses like his in this town. Like, this was like a jewelry store of high class, very well maintained. His whole family worked there, and everything they did in there was for God. He had, he had set standards with his family that... We will do this business. You will work here. If there's, if we're not going to argue about money, we're going to give this much to the town, this much to God, this much to this. And if if that doesn't work for you, then you just can't be here. Like it's gonna. This is all for God. And you could see, uh, like this place was prospering. I mean, it was like it was like you took an American jewelry store and dumped it in the middle of of just a little village, and uh, just amazing. But to hear him break down and how much her dad had touched his life, but planting that little seed and the gospel, it was just, man, it was amazing. So that was probably my uh, big takeaway on that. But I, and I got another one, but we'll, we'll see where time goes. Thank you for making me follow that. 
Um, so my experience was a little different than everybody else. Um, I spent about 90% of the trip sick. I had altitude sickness. So was in the hospital. So was not really able to experience everything that everybody else was. Um, but I will say kind of on the same note as everyone else was the Bibles. Um, getting to go and hand out these Bibles was pretty amazing because here, you know, you can get on your phone, you can buy it on Amazon. It's here within like four hours. These people from different towns walked and it was, I think, raining when we were yeah. leaving. Um, but just to hand the Bible and the, the sheer joy that people had on their faces just getting a Bible was really impactful for, for me. But um, but, you know, overall, wish I could experience more, but um, but got to know the medical system pretty well over there. It was nice. Um, they treated us very, very well. Um, there were a couple other people, too, that got really bad uh, altitude sickness as well. So definitely not the experience I was going for, but at the same time, it just made me realize kind of what my experience, what I want it to be, is not always what God's experience wants you it to be. So that kind of was a, a takeaway that I kind of got for it. Not what I was expecting, but, um, but yeah, so it was, it was a good trip other than the altitude sickness. So, <laughs> and here we go. Okay. okay. Well, let's see. Um, first thing I wanted to share about is, um, on Saturday we were there and, um, we were, um, working through a pastor and his brother and his sister both um, ran a the school that we were talking about that um, Denise also was so blessed by <laughs> his children. Um, and so they opened their doors on Saturday to the youth in the neighborhood, which was awesome. And so we went and um, some of the younger ones and me, Shane and, and I think Salem, they were playing volleyball with the kids. And then they came and um, they ministered to them. They brought them and put them in a circle as they do with youth groups. But these children didn't know the Lord and parents didn't know the Lord. It's just a community thing that, that the school was doing. And they, um, they had a little time of sharing. They had a couple testimonies. One in our group um, was from Columbia, he and his wife. And he had grown up in gangs and was, and he's from the Global Church in Miami. And he shared his testimony, and I thought it was great because it could these kids could relate. And he was in jail in Colombia for six years, and it's, it, he just ended. And then he ended up as finished three years in um, the United States because that's where his wife and daughter were. And um, he came to the Lord through there. And so he he gave his testimony and someone else gave their testimony to these young children. So that was one of the first opportunities that we got to see and share. Um, the next was Monday was um, we did, like all had said, we split in groups. So um, we went in a group bus and went three hours out to a small village and where the five pastors came together and brought their their people um, and they handed out Bibles there. And that's where I met a, a woman um, who spoke Quechu. Um, it is a dialect of the Incas and there are a lot in the mountains that um, speak that language only. It must be different than Spanish. And one of the girls were there to interpret. Um, I also met another um, um, wife of a pastor who was a nurse in the northern part of Peru, and then she came down and is ministering the medical needs in her husband's church. So that was awesome. The drive there and the drive back was not quite so much fun, but then um, Wednesday we went to Machu Picchu. Thursday um, was really kind of the climax. It was... Um, Janet, the leader, um, had suggested to the pastor that they might take and do a parent appreciation at the school. They'd never done that. And there's about 200 students at the school from like kindergarten all the way up to high school, more seventh graders. They're, they don't, I don't think they have many high school students yet. So we were going to help them set up and also um, um, serve their food to the parents as they came in. Um, so that went well, and like I said before, make sure Peggy Sue doesn't blow up any balloons. If you know her, don't let her blow up any balloons. She struggled. <laughs> Anyways, we, we um, helped, went back to our hotel, came back, 
and we serve people. We were asked to sit um, with someone who spoke Spanish at a table with the parents to minister to them because these parents, most of them were, were not churched, were not, did not know the Lord. So we had a fellow from the Miami church, Hubie, and it was Shane and I at the table. It was a woman with her son, and she had a uh, five-year-old that just started at the school. I believe she had four children, I think, through the interpretation. I think that's what she had, four children. But she was just there with her son, and he was in probably fifth or sixth grade. And um, so Hubie started right out asking her, you know, how did um, – the, with her daughter, did she come home? Did she talk about God? How did that influence your family? And so we shared with her, Shane shared his testimony and I, you know, shared later on, but, um, and also one thing I forgot earlier was her son had a recorder looking thing. I'm sure you guys know in school, the kids have the recorders, but it was some kind of flute thing. Yeah. And so he kind of held it up. So we're going, oh, because Shane was asking this this young man, well, do you do any sports? You know, and he was telling them soccer or something, but but he kind of held up this flute looking thing. And and so we asked him to play for us and he did. And he was just but he could speak a little more English than his mom. So we had dinner, and then it was just during that time that God just laid it on my heart to ask to have Hubie um, interpret that she could just accept God where she was in her bedroom and just say yes. And so she was just at the point where I just looked at her and knew she was just ready. She was ready. And so although we did what we could do, we planted seeds, I believe, through this time. And um, if you have an opportunity, I'd say go. 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 If God calls you, go. <laughs> okay, I've got some stuff to say, but real quick, um, speaking for the group, okay, if, if anyone here is interested in going on a trip in the future, what would you guys say, even with all the stuff that happened? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure we all have our own opinions about what the world thinks of Americans, and uh, you know, if you are able to travel, you do. But um, this opportunity is a, a chance to let the world know uh, how humble and religious and, and the Christian good that we can do around the world as Americans um, in a simple way. And uh, you can really reach out to the rest of the world and let them know about Jesus and about how we feel about Jesus um, it's just amazing. If you get a chance, this is your chance to, and what they said, uh, this will change you. You will not change what you think you will, but it, this trip will change you. It really makes you think about everything differently. So there you go. Is there one you knew that you said you wanted on that trip? 30 seconds. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I don't, there were so many amazing God moments on the trip, and uh, I don't know, how many, have you guys ever had, like, a super God moment that was just, like, it didn't even feel real? No? Yeah, yeah there's <laughs> yeah, none. There is none. Um, so, the Sunday after we arrived, we went to church, and when we walked in, um, the worship band was playing, and man, we are just so blessed, like, great instruments, uh, you know, this church has provided great uh, equipment. We have an awesome tech team, the whole deal. These guys, not so much, you know. It's, it's, it's something you would find maybe in a corner of a bar somewhere, like not that great. But the music and the quality of the worship they put out was absolutely mind-blowing. The vocals, the instrument playing, everything was so spot on that none of that mattered. Like, you were so engaged in the worship, and, uh, <clears throat> you know, most of it was in Spanish, but then they would do, they did, they kind of did all the stuff we do. They did a lot of Hillsong and stuff like that, but they they did two or three songs, because they knew we were there, where they did um, one verse of it in Spanish, and then they would do the next verse in English. And something that I tried years ago, I do that song, uh, Great Are You, Lord, sometimes. 
about four years ago, I tried to do that all in Spanish, and I was failing miserably. And, you know, I still want to do it, but I just, I struggle with it. So during that worship, they started doing that song. And when the words came up in Spanish, I could read them all. God just opened my eyes, and it was, man, it was, it was just one of those moments that is just, uh, I mean, it's only, it can only be a God thing. So if you ever have a chance to do something like this, it will definitely change you. Okay. So. Okay, so you're going to have a chance to do this because we're going to be letting you know uh, late January, early February uh, what our next trip is, and we give you plenty of time. It's usually four to five, six months out. Uh, let you plan. It's about eight days, so you don't have to uh, take a lot of time off with our high school kids. We go for 21 days, so we're uh, deeply immersed, but the um, it, it does give you a chance. We help with the financing, so um, get a chance. Uh, I'm going to have them stick around for a few minutes after this service, and uh, come up and ask them questions because, again, and after the first service, all the questions were about being sick, right? right. So uh, <laughs> nobody talked to anybody else. They just all came to Jessica. So, um, But uh, so somebody, you know, make them feel good, spread around, and ask them about Jessica being sick. And uh, so anyway, she was just thrilled to get up here and talk in front of everybody. So, um, so I, I was telling her before the service, she says, I, I, you know, it's scared to death to do this. I said, it's interesting. When they take surveys, the number one fear that adults have is speaking in public. And the number two fear is death. <laughs> so that means most of you would rather die than speak in public. So, uh, so, anyway, so let me just say some things real quick. I'll get you out of here. Uh, first of all, I was gone last week. Thank you for uh, Volusia Basket Brigade, Thanksgiving Basket. We were part of over, if you were here a couple weeks ago, the whole front of our auditorium was filled with uh, boxes. You guys always do great on that. Um, churches, organizations, individuals, businesses uh, came together, uh, provided Thanksgiving meals for over 4,000 families in that area. Um, I love Volusia County. I love Southeast Volusia. Um, they're good people here, okay? And uh, sometimes it's just getting the needs out, letting them know. So, so next week when you come, and like I said, we'll have all the Christmas lights and full music and everything, but um, I'm going to teach a three-week series called Getting Christmas Right. Um, and, and I want us to do that in a practical way. So, so what we're going to do, and you'll see this in the email that goes out Wednesday, and we'll probably put it on Facebook, uh, we want to do three things this year. We, we always give. We want to do three things. One is, as we've done in the past, uh, the white athletic socks. Um, we, we get those. We give those through another mission that, um, that helps uh, homeless uh, guys. So uh, we'll have that. Uh, and then uh, Publix, Winn-Dixie, I don't know if, if Walmart does, but let, let's use the BOGOs this month. And, and, and um, I would like to ask every family in our church to, uh, to provide 10 either cans or boxes or a mix of both. We'll have a place for you to do that, and we can... Uh, really take care of that. And then the other one, I, this has just really kind of touched me. I, I don't know whether you've, you've paid much attention, but just in our area here in the last two or three weeks, we've had little kids with autism wander off and, and drown. And there's an article in the Daytona News Journal about the connection between autism and water, and it's really just super interesting. But the first little family uh, that had the four-year-old boy, we have a connection with them through a family in our church. Guy in our church is a contractor. This guy's his plumber. It's a single dad. Um, and we're going to help them this year. And so what we're going to do is for the next three weeks, you can even do it Christmas Eve, but um, any money that comes in in pure cash in the offering back there, drop it in. Or if you want to write a check, just write family on the memo. Or if you um, give online, just write family in the memo thing. We're going to give them every single penny of that. Okay, and church is going to uh, top off on that. I, I thought I might add, I thought it was pretty cool when you guys were talking about giving out those Bibles. Uh, we bought a thousand of those Bibles. You guys bought a thousand of those Bibles. And uh, that's, that's really cool that it went from here to there. And uh, so anyway, so, so we got all of that going on. Again, you'll be, you'll be hearing a lot about that. Uh, Christmas Eve services are at 5 and 6.30. We'll talk about that as it gets closer. You've all heard of Elf on the Shelf. Um, our tradition is here. We have Elf on the Lawn, and and this Friday night on the back lawn, on the back of Building 2, we got a big, giant 20-foot movie screen, 
and uh, we're going to be showing the movie Elf. We have a lot of fun with it. I've seen it 30 times. It's still <laughs> stupid fun. You, you know, you go, here it comes. I'm not going to laugh, and you see it, and you laugh. So, um, but, uh, but bring your blankets, bring your chairs, bring your coolers, drinks, all that kind of stuff. We'll have popcorn, and, uh, but we're not going to feed you. You guys do that, okay? <laughs> you bring all of that, bring your drinks, and, uh, and we just have a great time with it. So uh, that's this coming Friday night, 6.30 out on the back lawn of the church out there. So, do you enjoy this today? That's, uh, that's really cool. And um, the thing is, I've, I've been here a while, and I know all these people. And I'm going, wow, they were in Peru, <laughs> you know? And poor Peru. And <laughs> You know, I wonder if those churches are having meetings today saying, those Americans... You know, what was up with that? But anyway, uh, but anyway, I'm, I'm very proud of them. We had, we had like, like I said, we had like 15 that wanted to go and kind of weren't able to. So hopefully we'll be able to do better that. They're going to stick around uh, up here at the front for a few minutes. Uh, in between services, we had Einstein bagels. And we've got some left over. They're on the counter in the kitchen. So if you don't run over each other, you can go over there and take some bagels home, and that'll be fine. I'll hang around up front. These guys will be here. Thank you guys for coming out. God bless you.